Wow. Now here's some news, Mason. Oh, yes. It's by the JRE podcast, which is the Joe Rogan experience. Mm, um, that's right. It's what Joe Rogan is experiencing. And then we get to experience it via that, osmosis. That's true. That's we true. learn as he learns. Yeah, and then that's he forget, right. And then he forgets. And then the next person sits out in front of him. And says something <laughs> completely contrary to the previous guy. And he goes, oh, wow. That's also true. <laughs> I see both sides. Yeah, and there's right. value in that. That's right. It's $100 million worth of value in that. <laughs> that's right. $100 million. So Zack Snyder was on and they had a big conversation about all sorts of things, directing and movies that he's worked on. But one of the things they talked about was Batman and his version Great. of Batman. Let's talk about Batman again. Yeah, man. And uh, whether Batman should or shouldn't kill. Yeah. Uh, That's what Zack Snyder said. He said, people are always like, Batman can't kill, right? So Batman can't kill his cannon. And I'm like, okay, the first thing I want to do when you say that is I want to see what happens. And they go, well, don't put him in a situation where he has to kill someone. And I'm like, that's just like you're protecting your God in a weird way, right? You're making your God irrelevant if he can't be in that situation. So, yeah, and Rogan went on to say that Batman's rule of not killing is ridiculous given the circumstances in which he operates. And then he goes on to say, so in The Dark Knight Returns, there's a scene, I copied it in Batman v Superman, where he grabs an M60, he busts through a wall, and he grabs the M60, and in the comic book, he's like, got this kid, the mutant has this kid with a gun to his head, and he's like, I'll kill him, I swear I'll do it, and Batman and says, I believe you, and shoots him straight in the head. So that was a conversation about Batman killing. I think also, when you say, let's see what happens when Batman kills, like, what does that mean? Mm. I feel like even though his Batman does kill, it doesn't mean anything. There's this, there's, he's just flying the bat plane and blowing yeah. cars up with people in it, and it's just like... Smashing cars into other cars, and there's not a knock-on effect of... Well, yeah, it's not meaningful. It's not... It's yeah, not, there's he's no, just doing it. it. It's not at the end where... At the end of Zack Snyder's Justice League, Superman isn't like... Oh, yeah, by the way, you did all those murders, so you have to go to prison. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking it. you to prison. I'm going to disable you with my superpowers. Yeah. And I'm going to take you to prison. So. Until you learn a big lesson. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that's, I know, a strange way to look at it where it's like, well, I want to see him do that. And I don't even disagree because there's been multiple versions of Batman who has killed also across the movies. I saw on someone posted in our subreddit where in the Zack Snyder cut subreddit, somebody posted the Batman kill count video I made like sure. 400 years ago, which sure. resurfaces every now and then. Which, again, which you keep trying to delete, I, I but the internet to... never forgets. But also when I put that together, it wasn't like, see Batman kills and it's fine. It yeah. was just like, isn't this interesting? That this yeah. is the version of Batman and the, I don't know. That Hollywood... It demands this. Yeah, and I guess if there was any commentary on it, which there really isn't, it's that maybe I would like to see a Batman who doesn't just kill yeah. people and it doesn't mean anything. That's the conclusion you, yeah. you drew, yeah. That was before Batman v Superman as well, and I know Zack Snyder has referenced it, and I just, your want, I just want to get ahead of this again. That that meme <laughs> of, of that, you know, the man flicking dominoes, and at the, bo- the first domino it says James... Mr. Sunday Movies Batman Kill Count video, and at the the final domino is Zack Snyder on the Joe Rogan experience <laughs> talking about hot yoga and, and, and roids or whatever. I just want to clarify, I don't think I had anything to do with this. That's not me, like, defending myself. I just mean it doesn't make any sense because he, was, he, re- he has referenced that video briefly, but it was long after this movie was made or uh-huh. well into production or whatever. Look, as much as I'd love to have an influence on Batman versus Superman. When we all. <laughs> when we all. I like to think we are because we're the fans and he gave us what the fans demand. That is true. So, yeah, I don't even mind when Batman kills. But the thing is as well, it, that comic that he's referencing, uh-huh. it can be interpreted and I think it's I think it's what it is. Yes. And the animated version also does a variation on this where he doesn't kill. He shoots him maybe in the shoulder. Mm. Like there's no bullet hole in the guy's, head. the guy's head. So, yeah, even within that comic, I mean, Batman also, there's like different lines in that comic about how like he hasn't killed anybody for 30 years. I saw someone also mention some because I was looking for this, like, is there a definitive answer that he kills anybody in that comic? Uh-huh. And he does use guns, like, a couple of times. Then he, there's that famous panel of him breaking the gun mm. and being like, it's a coward's weapon, yeah. et cetera, even though he's already he's been using it. And them. then there's the famous panel where he's like, oh, I forgot I am a coward, and he puts the gun back together, and he puts <laughs> even bigger bullets in does it. Does he? Yeah, 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 yeah. And it works? Yep, it's Incredible. great. Incredible. It works so well. He's wanted for a bunch of stuff throughout. The police are after him, but at no point does it say, like, and he's doing murders. Mm. Like, and he just recently did a murder when he shot the mutant or whatever. Yeah. That's why I distractify it. Sorry, just quickly. After shooting the criminal, a new police commissioner puts out a warrant for Batman's arrest on charges of assault, breaking and entering and creating a public hazard, but there's nothing about murder. Oh, those yeah. are some receipts. Yeah. Also, in any given universe, in the in the Batman v Superman universe, again, and we, we've talked about this endlessly. That's why I like it. I know, right? If it's a Batman who kills, why is the Joker still alive? Yeah. Because, the, again, the guys in the trucks that are shooting at Batman and he blows them all up and destroys them and they're dead. 
Mm. Uh, they were probably just there for a paycheck. Yep. Maybe. Some of them just worked for Lex Luthor when he was a legitimate businessman. They're, That's just, right. they're just his security team, and now they're dead. But he <laughs> won't kill that mass murdering guy who killed Robin. Yeah. Won't kill him? Interesting. Okay. That's the line, man. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This I, is important. I think you can't it, replace the Joker. I think that line is really important because, and this is referenced multiple times. And also, I should point out, this is his interpretation. He's allowed to make a Batman that kills. You should call him the Do Batman who the kills. Batman who kills. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. It's cool. Say. I really don't have a problem with anybody like having their own interpretation. Yeah, but also as well, that a Batman who's put in a position where he has to kill people, so he just does, mm. that's not very interesting. No, it's not. It's the Punisher or most superheroes. A Superman that kills or a Spider-Man that kills. Yeah, and Superman does kill. Like he has, yeah. he's been known, he's known to have and killed. Spider-Man kills with his radioactive semen. As that's we right. Know. That is the thing that has happened. And it's, yeah. I mean, and also it's been explored. Yes. This, I, I mean, this is a sort of a very... You know, oh, imagine if Batman killed people. Well, he's done it in other stuff. Yeah. He's, 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 remember the time when he was a Dracula? He was a Dracula and that that's, time. You know, that's more interesting, I think. I think, look, maybe if the movie was something like, and we're talking about a movie which is now, what, eight years old? Mm. When you go to the future and he's killing in the future, in the nightmare How's future. How does he get there? How does he get there? Like, and, mm. do you, and that's that's kind of something you want to avoid. I think Batman v Superman should have leaned way heavier on the nightmare stuff because that's more interesting. I agree. Yeah. And then at the end he just... Well, it was going to get there eventually. Yeah, I guess that's true. But at the end, present day Batman goes, well, I probably shouldn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I've already been doing it. (laughs) But But I won't anymore. I'm going to stop now. It's an interesting idea of Batman realising that maybe his methods are outmoded and deciding maybe one day he's thinking about, oh, maybe I should kill the Joker. But then he sees the result of it in the nightmare future and he's like, well, actually, that was bad, so I I won't now. And, And I understand also there is like when you make the real world comparison, there is a lunacy to a man who does all of this and has someone like the Joker in the real world and doesn't kill him, Mm, right? Yeah. There is a nonsensical, even a suspension of reality that you have to make, Mm. you know, to, but he's not a, he's not real. So you kind of, you can kind of make those, you know, excuses and he does need that hard line for his own reasons. Also, because he's crazy, because yeah. Batman is a crazy yeah, person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what if there was a, you know, what if Batman is in a position, you put him in a position where he has to kill people, wouldn't it be crazy? Well, I guess, but you don't. You don't have to. Though, yes, do you? that that's the thing, right? I find it for me personally more interesting. I guess interesting. he would then. Yeah, know? I guess he would. Well, I guess he really just inter- would. <laughs> it's really interesting that if you had, or well, maybe you put him in a position where he has to. The Joker's got a nuclear bomb, and if you don't, he doesn't kill the Joker. Then the nuclear bomb goes off and it kills everybody in the world. What would he do? I guess he'd kill the Joker, but I mean that's not very interesting. Is no, it? I guess we'd all do that, <laughs> but it wouldn't be that interesting, would it? Yeah, and I, then you wouldn't have the Joker anymore. I find it more interesting that it's a, it's a no-win scenario that Batman is put in and then you write a solution mm. which you don't just see on the surface, which is he throws a batarang and disables the nuclear bomb or whatever, you know, mm, yeah. where you, you write a seemingly no-win scenario. Oh, but what if actually was no-win scenario and he <laughs> actually couldn't win at all? Wouldn't that be what, what would Batman do then? I better kill people with machine gun. Okay, well, let's talk about this because he also said... Because it's like a no-win scenario. It's the, like the Kobayashi Maru. The Kobayashi Maru. This, I know what it is. I know, but this is him explaining it. Okay, right. In Star Trek is the test they put Kirk through uh, where there's no win. Be- oh, they actually put every recruit to it? Every That's cap- true. Every Everybody has a go. Com- the command structure, they put them mm. through the Kobayashi Maru. They want to see how you'll react. So they say, okay, we're going to make a scenario, a test scenario where you don't win, where there's no way to win. And in that situation, we find out what you would do in a no-win situation because if you're going to be a commander of a spaceship, you're going to be in situations where you know it's life or death and especially when uh, there is no tricking it. There's no tricking death in that case. But and Kirk does trick it. I was going to say, in the famous thing that with Captain Kirk is he went in and he hacked the machine and made it so there was a solution. Yeah. That's what Batman you're does. You're describing a scenario. That's, that's what an ideal Batman situation is. He, he tricked out the situation so he doesn't have to do it. Yeah. The Kobe Ash- also, it's not real. No. The like Kobayashi Maru <laughs> situation, it literally isn't real. The Kobayashi Maru, it becomes a winnable scenario for Kirk because it's it's... It's, it's re-rigged written it. that way. He it's rigged written, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, you're right. He rigged it and it's written that he rigged it. <laughs> and so he did it. So why can't you have Batman? Why can't you yeah. rig it so Batman wins it? Anyway, I thought that was just an interesting conversation. But again, it's his interpretation. Mm. And I don't have a problem with Warner Brothers gave him the keys and the budget and that's what he made. That's right. And that's what he thought was fun and interesting, even if his interpretations might not be what we necessarily take from it. But he also t- he talked about some um, some streaming numbers in regards to <laughs> Rebel Moon Part 1, A Child of Fire. Yeah, great. Um, versus Barbie. Yeah, uh, so he go. said, say right now, 
it's almost at 90 million views, right? 80 or 90 million accounts turned it on, give or take. Okay, sure. Rebel Moon Part 1. First of all, I bet those numbers aren't accurate. Well, <laughs> I bet Netflix gave him those numbers so he wouldn't get And mad. it's also like it plays on the home screen and whatever. Yeah. We don't really know. I don't know the specifics of what accounts as a view. They're assuming two viewers per screening, right? That's kind of the math. No, I don't. I don't know. I watched. It. I didn't find anybody to watch it with. Did you? you? You didn't. You didn't watch it with your wife on your phone. Just <laughs> huddled around your phone watching Rebel Moon Part One, Child of Fire. So you think if that movie was in the theater as a distribution model, that's like 160 million people supposedly watched that based on that math. 160 million people at ten dollars a ticket would be what is that math? I don't know. 160 million times ten. That's 1.6 billion. So more people probably. Well, what's that? I don't even know. I haven't done the maths <laughs> earlier in my head. So more people probably saw Rebel Moon than Barbie in the theater, right? No. At, I Absolutely did, not. Look. As you mentioned, what does Netflix count as a view? And I guess if you want to go like more anecdotally, ask anybody if yeah. they've seen Rebel Moon. Yeah. And obviously people have, yeah. but then ask people if they've seen Barbie. And My what, parents have seen Barbie, well, exactly. but they haven't seen Rebel Moon. I'm not saying it didn't do well on Netflix. Also, there is a big difference between what I'm willing and what other people are willing to watch at home compared to pay money well exactly yeah first of all yeah the idea of well it's always two people watching it's not no especially not rebel nobody nobody's getting together a rebel moon watch party rebel part one a child of fire the difference is you are paying 25 bucks a ticket or whatever is to go see barbie or you're like well i've already paid the netflix fee for this month so i guess i'll watch yeah i'll see what's on there i'll rebel moon i guess like people are gonna see barbie in the cinema but if they see it okay i have to pay 25 bucks to watch rebel moon Probably not. No. And also the thing about that is Rebel Moon, according to his numbers, 90 million, it's not even in the top 10 Netflix movies. Huh. So I think for Netflix, this is not like a success story right. for them, even though there's another one coming and I think it's because they, they film them back to back. And there's also the director's cut, which is going to be Come six on, hours. Netflix. Get with the times. You can always write this off for tax reasons and delete it forever. <laughs> oh, is that what you want? Yep, yep, that's what I want. Yep. <laughs> So at number 10, with 135 million views, which if you double that because it's two people a screen. 270 million dollars. 270 million is extraction. And then I'll just quickly rattle these off. Nobody watched that with two people. (laughs) Extraction's a solo dude movie. (laughs) Uh, Glass Onion, The Mother, We Could Be Heroes, The Grey Man. The Mother? Don't know. Leave the World Behind, Bird Box, The Adam Project, Don't Look Up, and Red Notice. Had 230 million viewers. Which oh, so if you double 460 that. million viewers, yeah. Yeah, so I think, I'm not saying that, like, again, a lot of people didn't watch it, but that's just not true. Yeah. It just can't be. No. It's just not possible. No, 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 So, no, no. anyway, interesting conversation about movie making. I didn't watch the yeah. whole thing. I watched, you know, bits and pieces. He seems like a nice guy. He like, sure genuinely. does. Genuinely. Yeah. Do you think he's sick of talking about Batman? No, I think he loves it. Oh, really? I think yeah. he genuinely loves it. Yeah. Does he love it because he enjoys the character of Batman or does he enjoy upsetting people who love Batman? I don't think he likes upsetting people. I mean, there was a moment where he talks about that people hate him and he's like, I don't understand why people yeah. would hate me, which also I don't I don't get either. Like, just because yeah. you don't like his movies doesn't Look, mean... I, I again, I've said this before, but I think to me... The way they went into the DCEU, that appealed to me. The idea of, well, the MCU's got this universe that is just sort of starting yes. in a way. And to go, well, as a point of contrast, the DCEU is this universe that's been going for 20 years. And Batman's been fighting crime for 20 years and he's kind of, you know, he's at the ed- he's on the edge. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah, absolutely. And I would have loved to see, again, I, I would have loved to see, you know, all the characters introduced, not as not as young guys who've just gotten their powers or whatever, but people who are established established yeah, yeah no i agree i mean i guess that's also what they're doing with the dcu like mm. it's an established superman batman has a son at this point yeah nathan fillion is guy gardner which means there's been a few green lanterns at this point you yeah. know yeah. so if you like yeah. that mason get ready well I, yeah i do and i think but i think what the, the execution for me was lacking you know? yeah and one of those would be just batman's just killing everybody again i think that's a it's that's cool. A, it's cool, and it, but it's the line that that character shouldn't cross, and that's one of the defining characteristics. Maybe it is anachronistic or kind of old-fashioned, but, yeah. but there it is. Wonderful stuff. Anyways, if you've got any thoughts on Zack Snyder, leave it below. No, I don't think anybody has I any thoughts on I want to know. Don't you, Mason? Yep, I do. Great.